Thank you so much for coming uh, to the budget forum. I'm launch of uh, two budget books this evening. Not just one budget book, two budget books this evening. I'm actually booked this hall, uh, which is a smaller hall among the other halls. Main reason being for the past years when we organized budget forum, uh, the presence is usually 30 people. <laughs> so I thought I'll book the smallest of the halls here just to make sure that it doesn't look like a complete empty hall, but it looks like this year there's a greater interest in discussion of the national budget, which is a good thing, because the budget is essentially how the government is spending our taxpayers' dollars. And that's very important because that will determine where the country will go, whether your children in the future will be paying more taxes, or whether your children will be enjoying the fruit of your investment uh, in the government that we have today. So I won't be speaking too much about the budget today. I think uh, I have spoken enough and uh, I have my contributions in a book which you, I'm sure you can read. But I would just like to read out several paragraphs from a blog. Uh, the blog's name is Wang Sa Maju for Malaysia, not uh, Mr. Wee Chu Kyung's blog. Uh, this is a resident in uh, Wang Sa Maju. It's uh, Mr. Lee Wee Tak. He has written about the budget, he gave some brief remarks about Najib's first budget uh, in his post and uh, I'll read you some, uh, some paragraphs of it. Well, he did introduce his blog, uh, his post, by saying that this blog post is not designed to hit praise or hit him and his Najib. He end has full time and well paid uh, politicians and journalists doing that. I'm doing his maiden performance as a taxpayer to put part of his salary and benefits. We do have the annual incremental goodies increase in personal relief, insurance premium relief by 1,000 ringgit, offset by the reintroduction of real property gain tax at 5%. The funny thing is, Najib spoke about the concern about credit card debt and the situation. The solution, sorry, is imposing ringgit 50 and 25 ringgit respectively on principal and supplementary card members. This stuff looks innocent enough until I saw this. As at August 2007, the total number of principal and supplementary cards in Malaysia were 8.2 million and 1.2 million respectively. Apply the two tax and the total additional fraction is a whopping 440 million ringgit. Actually, if you look at 2009 data, the total will add up to 520 billion million. So it's a fair bit of collection for the government who is really short of cash. Now back to the back to the back to the back to the blog post. Now, if you want to control credit cards, more effective measures would be to impose stricter guidelines on qualification, credit limits on card holders and limit the number of cards held, not by increasing the financial burden of all card holders, whether they are having a debt problem or not. Now, one of the big things would be myself, because I think I carry about 10 credit cards. <laughs> uh, not because I spend a lot, uh, most of them are zero balance, and I have no card debt at this point. But when I was an entrepreneur, I did have a lot of card debt, because I used my credit card to pay salary. And it's a very expensive affair, but it's, uh, it's the most legal loan chart you can find uh, when you're desperate for cash to pay salary. But I own cards today for different reasons. I own cards today because there are so many benefits and promotions attached to each particular card. So I have a Shell card to pay for my Shell Petrol. Uh, gives me 2.5% cash rebate the very next month. Uh, and for all my other purchases, I get uh, 0.75% cash rebate the very next month. And that's better than most credit card points, which is worth only uh, half a cent per point. Trust me, I've done all the calculations. <laughs> I have a Citibank Air Asia card as well. Uh, why? Because uh, when you want to go overseas for travel with your family, they give you one day at advance promotion. So when they have those crazy zero fare things, you can be sure that I book my ticket one day before the promotion starts with the card, and I get zero fare to, to travel overseas. And then, uh, 
and then the, I have an Amex card because the Amex card gives you up to 10 times reward points and each reward point worth half a cent, that's 5 cents return per dollar if you spend with your Amex card. So in short, when they have such promotions, I keep an Amex card. I also have an HSBC card, why? Because I get 10% off at Starbucks. <laughs> so now I have a problem because I have to start figuring out which card I keep and which card I have to call the call center to, to, to say uh, it's time for me to say goodbye. <laughs> okay? Uh, and I, I think what he said is right. I think for, for people like myself, assuming I, I, I'm financially disciplined, I don't get into debt, uh, I can't benefit all these things from the card company. Unless, of course, the card company decide to adopt the tax, which then defeats the purpose of the government imposing this tax uh, in the first place. Now back to the phone. Nike spoke of, spoke of towards high income society. I wonder what inspired um, I'll just leave that out. He mentioned the specific target of 2.5% income growth for the next 10 years, without specifically mentioning how this is going to be achieved. It is merely sloganeering again. He did not speak of how to in, how he intended to create an environment whereby high value jobs can be created or a visible plan to create a competitive and capable workforce here. He did not even address one of the main causes of artificially low wages here, the high percentage of foreign labour. Okay. I rather have a revision of the 1971 University and University Colleges Act to grant undergraduates more freedom to pursue intellectual growth rather than having a gimmick 50, 50 ringgit discount for train rides and internet charge. These two measures are derisive and derisive when considered against the weight of the act on the shoulders and, uh, and mindset of the undergraduate. Freedom, the restriction on mind and the body, and we have a better chance to create innovative and creative graduates improve our human capital. And one of the, the simple uh, jokes that I've been telling on this particular issue is that, you know, our Najib says we want to create an innovative culture, we want to create a creative uh, people. And one of the measures we will do, we will set up the National Innovation Institute. Uh, innovate what? You know, is it going to be a biotech thing? Is it going to be a creative art thing? Is it going to be a technology thing? Is it going to be a computer thing? Innovation covers everything, it's all encompassing. A, a national innovation or, or creativity institute is not going to do much to change that. As the writer said here, it's all about changing the minds and opening and bringing up the minds of our young 